I'm talking about our sinking funds today. That is the focus. So if you want to know more, stick around for the details. Hi friends and welcome to the budget bounce. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jen and we talk all about living life on a budget, saving for a future, paying down debt and all the life that happens along the way. So if those are things that interest you, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell. So you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So today is going to be less of a spreadsheet video and more of um, kind of like a story time, I guess a little bit. I'm going to talk about the philosophy behind how I organize our sinking funds and why I, why I do it that way. So if you've been around, you know that we have a lot of sinking funds and I'll throw a screenshot up here to, uh, from our budget. So you can see, I don't remember the number that we have, but there are a lot of them. And the reason why we have so many sinking funds is because we need to make sure that we have the money that we need for things when they happen. And so sinking funds in general are intended to be, you set a goal and you save over time to meet that goal. And then you have the money for whatever that goal is, is for. So it might be going on vacation. It might be paying an, you know, a big insurance bill. It might be a quarterly bill. Like we have a quarterly utility bill that we pay. It could be setting aside money. So you have money, uh, if you need car repairs or anything like that. I mean, it could be any number of things and we take it to the next level and have a whole bunch beyond that. So we, uh, we have some things like we have sinking funds for our children and grandchildren. So if anything comes up with them and they might need a little help with something, we have it there and set aside and available. We don't set a whole lot aside for them, but it does add up to a few hundred dollars. So I get questions about how do we organize them? How do I actually keep track of them? So you see them in the spreadsheet. And so of course I'm representing the fact that we have this, this fund and here is how much we put in and here's how much the balance is. Okay. Or it might show how much we spent that month. So there's all of that, but how do I really organize it? So there are a couple of different philosophies that you can follow. So first of all, um, we use a high yield savings account. Let me just say that right now it's an online bank. And actually we use multiple banks because we, I was trying out different banks at the beginning and actually I'm about to move some things from one bank to another one because I like what the other one has to offer. So the three banks that we currently have funds in are, I'm sorry, the two banks that we currently have funds in are Capital One, it started out Capital One 360, and then um, also Marcus by Goldman Sachs. And Marcus has had the um, one of the top uh, APRs, I guess, uh, since the beginning, I mean, they were like 2.2% or something like that when I joined, which is a really good interest rate for a savings account. So typically, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot out of savings anyway, but if you need to have some things that are liquid, putting funds into a high yield savings account is the way to go. And those are almost always online banks because they don't have to um, sustain all of the brick and mortar, I guess, that um, and the expenses that come with that, among other things. I'm sure there are many other reasons why. But we use those two and um, we have different things in different places. Now in Capital One, I have a checking account. So in addition to the savings accounts, I have a checking account. In Marcus, all I have is savings accounts. So we have all these different sinking funds and we actually set up I actually set up separate accounts for every single one. That's how I choose to do it. And for me, the reason behind that is because then I have, I don't know how to explain this, but there is some accountability for me internally and psychologically in maintaining those separate accounts. I don't, I do not trust us that if we were to have $8,000 sitting in one account and a spreadsheet that said, okay, that $8,000 is for these various things, I don't trust us to do the right thing. I know us well enough, I mean, that sounds silly, but I know us well enough to know we are not gonna do that well. It's the reason why we pull our funds out of our checking account, 
when it gets dire direct deposited on payday and we automatically make transfers over to our sinking funds. So I have some in Capital One, I have some in Marcus, and I, was, I opened an account in Ally a long time ago, probably three years ago, and I never actually used it. So there's like $5 sitting in there. I think it's like $5.31 because it's earned a little interest over time. But um, I want to put up a screenshot here of what I saw. Um, and I've heard people and seen them talk about it in videos and on social media posts and whatnot. But um, Ally does buckets. So you can have one account and then you use buckets to put your money in and you, they have some, some standardized buckets that they have there for you, or you can create your own, as you can see here in the screenshot. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is move probably most of our uh, Capital One over to uh, Ally. I think that's what I'm gonna do because the interest rate is so low at Capital One. There's just no, there's no, even their performance one, and I have one of those accounts, even their performance one is only 0.89% right now. And I just got an email from Ally today that they're going to 1.25 from 1.15. And Marcus is currently sitting at 1.2%. So there's no reason. And, oh, and the other Capital One accounts are at 0.09% right now. I don't know why they did that. A few years ago, they came up with these performance savings accounts and I never moved everything over. So we have been literally earning almost nothing. So it's time. I need to take the action and move it over. But like I said, if we have a whole bunch of money in the checking account, it's very easy for us to overspend because we feel like we have it. And if I'm not looking at that spreadsheet all the time and letting Matt know, hey, you know, we only have so much left in this budget, then he could be out and stop by the grocery store and pick up $50 of groceries, not knowing that we're already done. So if I'm not keeping up on it every single day, sometimes that can get away from us. And I don't, I don't like, I don't like to keep it in there because if it's sitting in the checking account and he sees the balance, then, then he thinks that we have the money. And that's because you can't be communicating all the time. Even, even with, so with uh, messaging and texting and everything, it's difficult to stay on top of that stuff. It happens very quickly. And so it is a psychological thing for me that I actually manage every single separate account. But I am going to move to Ally and I'm going to try one account and I'm going to use their buckets. So that was some of, um, I've, I've had one viewer in particular who's been asking me to talk about this. And this was some of the research I was doing to figure out where I was going to put everything because I wanted to be able to talk about that. Now, I will say we have some one-off accounts in various places like our city utility fund is not sitting in a high yield savings account. It's sitting in our normal bank, which is not any of the ones I just mentioned. So that one is there. And then we have another one for uh, the annual life insurance premium that we pay. That's in a credit union. Um, I don't remember why I chose that. I think that that was another savings account I had at the time. And I decided to use that one to save it all too. There's really no rhyme or reason. We got that we did that in 2010. We've been paying that annually for, it's a 20 year term. So we've been paying that out of that account ever since it started. And I'm not going to stop. I mean, there's no point in moving that. So the other philosophy is, and I know there are people that I'm sure you guys watch that are doing it this way, because I know a couple of people in the YouTube space, the personal finance YouTube space. I know I'm in real life and I know that this is how they're doing it. So another way is you just have one savings account, no matter where it's at, whether it has buckets or not, you have one savings account and you manage everything in the spreadsheet or in your notebook or wherever you need, wherever you do it, your planner, whatever it might be. And you're managing all the in and the out and the interest and the balance and everything. And some people it's very therapeutic to do it with paper. And so they do it in a paper planner or they just do it in a regular notebook or any other notebook that they might have. So there are lots of different ways to do it. I do not have an opinion on how anyone else should do it. It needs to be whatever you are most comfortable with. I will say it has been very convenient to have a checking account 
tied in, in the same bank where we had some sinking funds. So I think I'm probably gonna look into Ally to see if I can open a checking account there because it is so much easier. You don't get charged for making withdrawals out of a checking account every month like you do out of a savings. So for instance, I send, I send a few hundred dollars every paycheck to Capital One to cover all of our sinking funds for the month. And when I send it, it goes to the checking account and then I can withdraw out to the different accounts each month for whatever it is that our sinking fund savings goal is for that month. And we don't get charged for any of those withdrawals. But if I didn't have that checking account and I was going to send it all to a savings account, if I have eight different funds that I need to be funding, you can only do six withdrawals per month in most banks before they start charging you for the withdrawals. And so eight is the perfect number where, okay, I have one account that got everything and that one needs to have some money left when I'm done sending all the transfers out, but I need to make seven transfers, but I only get six per month. So that will not work. You can't be sending it if you're doing separate accounts for everything. You can't send it all to a savings account and then distribute it because you could potentially be putting yourself in a position where you might have to pay for a withdrawal. And I don't want to risk that because it's it's ridiculously expensive for I don't even remember what it is, but uh, it happened recently when eBay switched over. Matt has a side a side business where he does reselling and when eBay switched from PayPal to whatever their new setup is temporarily everything went to that savings account at our main bank like all the charges went there and so all these withdrawals kept because he sells daily all these withdrawals and one month we ended up with th three extra charges and I was livid I'm like you've got to get this under control right now this is way too expensive you need to disconnect that savings account from this, from whatever you're doing. So we figured out another solution for that. But if you are using a checking account, you don't ever have to worry about that. You can make as many withdrawals out so that you can get them to your various sinking funds without any issue. Now, if you are doing Ally and you're doing buckets, I cannot speak to what that looks like. I would imagine you're not gonna get charged for allocating things to a bucket uh, and maybe I'll do a video once I get all that set up and I show how I do it. Maybe I'll, I'll do a, a screen share, a screen record, excuse me, so that I can share it with you guys and show you what that looks like. So I'm not sure what other questions you have about uh, how we manage our accounts or why we do it that way. But if you do have any other, any other questions, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, we are revisiting our sinking funds right now and evaluating, you know, which ones do we really need versus which ones don't we need and trying to, you know, focus our priorities uh, away from savings and back towards our debt. So that is coming. Those are things we're talking about, trying to stop the spending spiral and get things under control. So if you want to know more about that, I'll link the videos down below where I talked about that. There was one when I came back in April after being gone for a few months where I talked about um, some of the things that are going on that have led to this reassessment that we're doing. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and make sure that you watch this video. I actually recorded it a few years ago, but it is still today a standard. I talk about the sinking funds that everyone should have. That's all I've got for you today. See you next time.